My Republican colleagues like to say that we are not doing enough drilling here in the United States. And a lot of the numbers that have been tossed around by our witnesses here today can confuse a very fundamental point that I believe that our country must comprehend. We have 2 percent of the world's proven oil reserves. We produce 11 percent of the world's oil uh, on a yearly basis, and we consume 25 percent of the world's oil on a yearly basis. 2 percent of the reserves, 11 percent of the world's oil we produce, 25 percent of the world's oil we consume. Now, I have put together a graphic to help us to tie these numbers together and to help us to understand what they mean. So this uh, is an illustration of our burn rate, or the rate a country is producing its reserves. And it compares our burn rate to that of the other top 15 oil-producing countries in the world. And what do we learn? Well, no other nation on Earth is matching uh, the burn rate uh, of the United States in terms of consuming their own reserves. Uh, we uh, we uh, consume more than any other nation. Uh, we're burning through our savings, in other words, our reserves, faster than any other country on the planet. Uh, and as you can see, down here in Iraq and Kuwait and Venezuela, the United Arab Emirates, Iran, they have very low burn rates. Okay, so uh, in the long run, uh, this is a chart which obviously is going to cause our country great problems. I guess the first question I would ask to you, Mr. Caruso, is, is this burn rate for our country of our reserves sustainable over the long term, yes or no? Ultimately, we, we will reach the peaking point, and we, we did reach that in 1972 in terms of domestic reserves. How long can it go? It can, it, it can be a very long tail, but clearly we will be, based on anybody's forecast, uh, we'll be, it means we'll be importing a significant amount of oil for as long out as as we can see. So I think Mr. Russo, do you agree? Is this, is this sustainable over the long term, Mr. Russo? No. I mean, unless, unless we discover some new reserves or develop, develop more reserves, uh, you know, we have, it can be sustained, but at, at a declining, uh, yeah. most likely declining. And do you agree, Mr. Russo? Uh, yeah, essentially the, the, Inevitably, um, at, at any rate of, of um, production, we will eventually reach a peak that, that will be followed by a decline. We have, as, as Guy said, reached a peak, but there may be a very long tail. There are a lot of hydrocarbons out there, and we don't know how fast we'll be able to produce them. And which countries on this chart that are the oil-producing countries in the United States, which, uh, in the world, which of these countries benefits? in the long run, most from the fast burn rate uh, of the United States in terms of its oil reserves. Uh, Mr. Caruso. Well, the uh, OPEC member countries are the ones that have been most uh, determined to manage the, the price. They aren't always successful, but clearly, uh, I would say, in general, OPEC countries are benefiting. Mr. Russo, do you agree with that, Mr. Russo? I guess I would say that, that oil being a, a global commodity, in, in some sense, um, it really doesn't matter where the oil is produced. The, the price is determined by uh, supply and demand globally, and um, the benefits and, uh, and costs of that accrue globally. No, but in this context, the the faster we burn down our reserves is the more power in the marketplace those that have massive reserves uh, for the balance of the century uh, will, will have in terms of influencing uh, the, the price in the market, since they 
work as a cartel. Would you not agree with that, Mr. Russo? I do agree that at times OPEC has been very successful in managing the price, and, and it, it appears that that is a long-term strategy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.